those magnificent men in their flying machines. They go up to the above, they go down to the above. Ah, uh, hiya. Okay, I put this video on because I, uh, I've been a while since I've done one. So we'll just carry on. Okay. Right, we'll start with a fuselage. Okay. Sorry about the light conditions, but that's just a bit late in the evening. So as you can see, I'll just take this off well time. So, here we are. The X I've done a bit on more on the fuselage. So these are the outsides before I put the sheeting on. You know, to allow for the wing, and that's for the bolts. Obviously, it's all self-explanatory there. You know, that's all done, and it's all lined up, and it all works a treat. Okay, so I'm looking forward to when I start shaping that. But obviously, I had to make sure the wings were all right first, which I'll come to in a minute. So that's basically what I've done on the fuse since the last time um, we had a video of it. You know, and it's all trued up, and it's nice. I'm quite. Uh, there is another sheet needs to go on here a little bit to sh shape the, the form of the wings. You know, to make it all look like the real plane. And that's basically all that is to that. Uh, I might add, I suppose, I always do this. Other people would do it differently, but if you can see in there, where I've put the things in, I always put a bit th thin sheets of ply just to make sure they don't slip out over time. You know, other people do it differently, and they're epoxied in these. So everything's epoxied in there, and these are held on by white glue. So everything's solid as a rock. So don't move over time, you know. But that's how I do it. It's not much to do really. I've done it on other videos. So that's that there. Oh yeah, I might add as well, because I haven't got my glasses on. Things like here, you see, it's not on the plant, this. This little bit here where my thumb is. Sorry, I haven't got my glasses. This is so I can get the sheeting on, so it all fits nice. Okay, this isn't on the plant. I had to remake these myself. All right, draw it out. You just draw around the form and then just cut, draw around again the width of the sheet you're using, and then I put it in and glue it. Job done. So that's that, okay? So now onto the wings. So we have the wing. This is the top wing. So as you can see, I, I've put on the bit it says on the plan and I've filled it to shape, rather than trying to sand that down to the ridge. So it's a nice, even, smooth finish. Okay, and then the same with the back, that's according to the plan, so that's all in. Okay, where my finger's running. Um, again, things like here, where my finger is, you know, I've added the, these extra bits in here just to give it strength for this to, these strips to hold on to. You know, so the same with the back there. So it's a bit more sturdy. Things like that you need to do. Okay, so look, that's that. And then if I turn it over, because the big thing with this plane, of course, is the flaps. You know, obviously the ailerons are on. They're not in permanently. They're loose. I've done one side permanently, but the other not. They're just loose to have a guide. Yeah. Hence what I said before in a previous video. On, other one, on the original plan, it's made differently, but I prefer to do it this way. See, so it's nicer. So I've put a piece in. I'm going to put a piece in here. Just showing the other video to strengthen these. Okay, and then the flaps just fit in. So you get your flap. That's, you know, I can't see the flap. I'm going to my glasses. See? So the flaps fit in just quite nicely there. Okay, and they'll come up and down. Okay, the flaps are just made out as they are on the plan. These come in. I didn't get the dowling rod with the plan. I had to find that myself. The wood pack didn't include the dowling rod. But that's not a problem. So, you know, any hardware shop would do it that small. So I managed to get around that. And then you just sand these out, the ribs. Now people will say there's not a lot of strength there, but the idea is, is that I've doubled up here, the ribs here and there, and then once, one, when the, because uh, what remains to be done on this wing is the capping strips. So once you put the capping strips on, that will strengthen that piece there, where the fingers are. Add a bit of strength, you know, in case, you know, it'll snap otherwise. So it'll be all right. Okay, there's a lot of fettling, but you know what, you get it in the end and it's nice, it's all true. And then what else, are, what else I've done on here, to so, say, which is not on the plan, as you see here, these are obviously for the struts, okay, but these little bits here, these are for the rigging wires, right, they're not on the plan, but if you look at the, the real plane, you'll see that these are involved, right, it's very involved, both sides. So they're in, so they're ready to go. Okay, so what remains then after that, which I'm gonna to order tomorrow from Steve Webb Models, because that's why I usually use a brilliant, it's a little thin flat wing servo that fit inside here for the ailerons. Right, one on each side, obviously on the bottom wing, not the top wing. And then uh, a couple of mini servos to operate the flaps for them, so because they're obviously independent. Okay, so I'll work it out until it comes to it. So that's that way. Everything's sanded to shape. 
now, now I've got the other ones on, I'll sand them to shape as well. So we come on to the, um, we come on to the uh, other wing, the bottom wing, which is a real work of art to get done. So here we are with the bottom wing. The bottom wing's like this. So uh, just to show you the flaps in place there, see? So they're all lovely now. See? They all fit in nice. But like I said, there's the, there's the extensions I built in there. Just to give it a bit more rigidity. And when that, there's a hole during the side and just slot it in. And that's level with that. So when you put the, the bottom cap and strip on, it'll come over to the top of that so it gives it a little hinge. Okay? And that'll be perfect. Okay, same on that side. So, but what, what what's different on this, the, the, the bottom wing is obviously you've got all this gubbing, so that's where the holes are, yeah, well, that's self-explanatory. That's all wood glue, that, or that PVA. Okay, it doesn't matter to fall out. But here's the thing, see, like, filled it. This is the bit here, because this is about up to the fuselage, absolutely perfect, and you put the gap in, like I said, that piece of wood. But there's another piece that goes on here, right, to make it fair out, like, you know, to get the right fairing on the wing. So there's another bit that goes on there. So once that's all glued on now, I've got the wing married up to the fuselage, all true. I put this little bit on and everything here is going to be sanded to shape. So that's it. And you just look at the picture and just sand it. Take your time and sand it. Same with these clips here. These are like, these clips are on the real plane. You know, they obviously don't look like but I've got artistic license. It's a model, not on the real thing. So two of them go straight up to the top of the strut and these two bear off to the uh, points that I showed you on the other wing and again you've got these these were made out of uh, just um, I can't remember the proper name for them they're just splice spins and then I widened them out and just glued them in epoxied them in so it was tough um, again here it's added bits you obviously add you cut the same shape there to form it and then yeah space it so these are all tight with epoxy everything's epoxied in so it's rock solid okay so it's mainly there that's not much we can say these this is all cut from the plan it just takes time a lot of bloody time, I must admit. Uh, but once you've got it all, you just sand it all true and it's all nice. I'm quite pleased with it so far, because to be fair, it took a lot of thinking, looking at it and thinking about it and how the hell it's all done. You know, so, basically it's nearly there. Again with this, you've got to put this, uh, this is the wing it's going to have the flat servos in, the little thin wing servos. I used them on with Camel, they're brilliant. So I'll get them, and then obviously again, There'll be one mini servo in each side of each four wings. Four mini servos, one in each wing to operate the flaps. But that's another job. That'll be interesting because I've never made flaps on a plane in my life, so this is all new to me, which is good fun. You know, it's all good fun. So eventually, I'll then obviously sand the, the aileron tips to shape when the time comes. Uh, you know, because everything's true now; it's all sorted. So that, that the next stage is then. To be fair, now because I've got a week off on holiday, which is probably good really considering the situation I'm in um, I'm going to concentrate on the fuselage get all the sheeting done on it uh, so it's all ready for covering put in the uh, I'm, I'm in two minds whether to do it proper close loop because <coughs> I've got a bit of spare close loop um, wire and that and, and the stuff from other models so I'm thinking of doing it the proper way you know like the real thing but I'll just depend on how I feel um, so Otherwise, I use the old-fashioned way the rods, which I hate doing, but uh, it's got to be done. So that'll be that, really, you know. There's not a lot more to say at the moment. So, But because I've got a week off, the progress on the plane now will be rapid. You know, I'm going to spend as much time as my wife lets me, because she obviously wants to do things on our holiday. Not, You know, given the circumstances that are around with COVID now, there's not a lot of places you can really go. Um, we were planning to go back to our home in Wales, but that's not going to happen because they're a bit different to us, I believe, with their restrictions. So, I'm going to spend as much time in a workshop as possible, uh, whilst recuperating, as they say. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So, next video, there should be quite a lot of uh, difference in the uh, model. Okay? Uh, I might add as well, I have, all, uh, in, as if people are watching my videos, they're always, you know, if you scan down here, I have actually made all the tail plane. That's all ready to be fitted on, you know. I've done all that, so. But obviously, I've got to make the wings first and get everything true. That I always do it that way. Get the wings true on the fuse before I put the tailplane on. Oh yeah, and the other thing with the top wing, of course. So I, I'm making this up as I go along <laughs> because when the wing goes on, you've got to put these. The way I've done it, you've got to put plates on here on the bottom so that you can bolt the the wing on. I'm going to make it so you can just bolt the wing straight on. So when you're flying it. 
it only takes 10 minutes to put the plane together before you fly it, or 20 minutes max, rather than the way they do it on the plan. Jesus, mate, it take about half an hour to get it all together. So, you know, that's how it's all gonna be. So, these were a pain, these wimblets. God, man, they took, they're a lo labor of love getting all them in, right? They're all white glued. Don't do the white, uh, unless you're extremely quick and adept, do not use cyano because it's just not gonna, you're not gonna get it right, you know, and you won't have enough time to get more right. So I would decide to do it that way. These bits here, again, it's artistic license. You will find, if you scan just the camera over there, you'll see all the extras that I came with the, there's thousands of them. These are all extras that were cut off the plan. That, you know, so that wasn't too bad. Um, another thing with the ailerons, they never, uh, you never got, a, you have to make some of these yourself because with the kit they don't give you enough to do all four ailerons. So you have to recut some of these, both top and bottom. And that takes a bit of time because obviously you can see they are quite thin and very uh, delicate. So you cut them out of scrap bolster and just to get it all right, you know. And then obviously once I've got the servo in the right place, I'm going to have to put a horn. I'll have to this piece here and hold off the one that I made from years ago. I'll just trim it all down, glue it on, and put the plate in. To, uh, I make my own plates so that you've got that the room for the I'd serve out the bottom wire and then a plate at the top for the rigging strip that makes both work at the same time. Okay, so yeah, okay, when it's finished, it will look reasonably, it'll look reasonably like the real plane, but obviously artistic license with a model, so especially with the flaps, I'll have to do, I've never done it before, so if anyone, all you purists out there, there probably is a way of doing it inside so that you can, you know, you don't see the wire, but to personally, the way I do it is you, you won't see the wire in a way because the whole plane's silver and it'll just sort of be hidden. And when you're flying up hundreds of feet in the air, no one's going to notice. That's how I look at it. So really, that's about it. Uh, as it goes for sheeting, once I've got all the plates in ready, I'll sheet it to make it stronger where necessary. And then I'll obviously put the capping strips on, which is a mundane job in itself, but it's a must and it'll look pretty. That's the idea. And hopefully, by this time next week, where are we now? Sunday. Um, most most of the woodwork definitely by Sunday. Most of the woodwork, all, as long as I get the servers and that in time from Steve Webb, I'll uh, models. I'll um, have that woodwork done ready for covering. That's the plan. Um, if there's any questions about the flaps and that, all I can say about the flaps is is that, that once you've made these, you sand it so it's there. I'm just try to figure the things that I've already forgotten because when you put these in, they're not as straightforward. You, these are extras you have to put in at the back, just scrap bolster, put them in between the ribs, and they have to be sort of like fettle with them with a blade so you get a nice open, you know, so it opens like that, okay, and shuts. Okay, so that, that's basically, it's, it's just a lot of thinking and a lot of time before you, you know, the, the engineer's rule, uh, measure twice, cut once, and that's exactly what you must do with these, especially the flaps, because they are a bloody nightmare if you don't get it right. You only get one chance for these. Okay? So, anyway, I suppose that's about it for now. I can't think of any, please leave some comments underneath if you want. And, uh, hey ho, we'll get on with it. So, next video, I'll see you then. Cheerio. Bye.